Hi, I'm Sam Fordham, Head of Technical for Riser. Welcome to the Contour Image Based Planning Tips Tutorial. When making an image based plan, it is really important that you understand the layer in which you're making a plan off. We have multiple layers that we can take through to the image based planning tool. So, for example, we can make a plan from a source scan map. Understanding the variation that the source scan map is showing is critical to making sure that your seed plan is correct. Depending on where you are in the country and what your soil types are that you're planning on, the scan map can mean different things. So for example, this farm is in Essex. I know that the parent soil type is a heavy hand slope clay. Therefore, I can make a fairly decent prediction that the darker areas of the map are the heaviest areas of that field. It is also crucial to understand that brown in one field will not be the same as brown in another field as the scan map variability is only relative to the other data within that boundary. Therefore, if I have a brown in one field, brown in another field that could be a lighter soil type could be a very different soil type and need a very different seed strategy. Talking to the farmer or agronomist will help clarify these maps and these layers. If this same map and field were located on the South Downs, I would need to deploy a very different strategy to the colours when making a seed plan. In that scenario, the darker areas would be the better pieces of land that have got more body, more silt and clay content, therefore would require less seed than the more yellow areas, which would be chalk, which requires a very different strategy. Again, if I pick this field up and moved it to North Norfolk on the light land, the map would mean different things. The darker areas would be the better soil with more body, more organic matter, more clay and silt content. Therefore, would want less seed than the yellow areas that would be a higher sand content and more likely to drought in the spring. As I said before, the best way to understand these maps is to talk to the farmer or the agronomist before making any plans. The best layer to make a variable C plan off is NDVI or NDVI early. In selecting the NDVI tab, you can then pick an image that you know is relevant to that field. Again, inside information from the farmer or the agronomist is critical in making sure that you pick the right image to influence the seed map. Remember, seed is your first application, and if you get that wrong, the crop is set up wrong for the whole year. The best dates to pick imagery for for a variable seed plan are between December and the end of March. At this point, variation that you see on a map will be typically driven by the establishment of that crop. If we take this field as an example, I can see that I have a higher biomass on the south side of the field. And as I move northwards across the field, I have less and less biomass. This is driven by the establishment of this field, which is in turn driven by the soil types. The bottom of the field where we have the higher biomass is kind meadowland with a high organic matter and requires a much lower seed rate to the piece in the middle as we go up over the hill as a clay cap. And as we go back down the hill towards the river at the bottom, there is much less soil and we've got a gravel seam. These require different seed rates, but it is very difficult to tell that just looking at the NDVI map itself. The NDVI map shows the variation, but understanding that and knowing what strategy to deploy comes from conversation with the farmer. It is also very important that a field that we pick has not had a variable rate application on it previously. If we were to pick a image of a field that had previously had either A, variable nitrogen or B, variable seed rate, the map that we picked would be a variable based on a variable. This can lead to making the wrong decision and having a poor establishment off the back. The GCVI chlorophyll layer can also be used to make a variable seed plan. In selecting GCVI, we need to look at the months between May 
and July, where we can see how the crop senesces either through drought or through natural senescence. And the senescence rate of a field will be driven by the soil type. Again, this is a great indicator of where soil types change, but not necessarily understanding what's driving that. As with the NDVI maps, a conversation with a grower or an agronomist that understands those fields is critical in making the right choice for the right map to base your seed plan off. When setting the rates for a plan, it is critical to understand what the farmer is trying to achieve and the soil types you're working with. Target rate should be fairly easy to set, and this is normally what the farmer would go at if he was drilling the farm flat rate. Naturally, most farmers will change the base rate when drilling flat rate for different soil types as a block. And this is what you should set your target rate at. When determining a maximum rate, we need to look at some of the trial data to make that decision. The DTF farm trials showed that an increase in 50% seed rate was acceptable, but anything above this showed a decline in establishment. I would only really ever advise going above 50% seed rate if you're trying to smother out a weed problem like black grass or brine. When setting a minimum rate, it is, uh, it is advisable to understand what percentage establishment is, effect, is expected on your kind of land where your lower seed rates would be. Typically, we're looking for a winter survival plant count, so February, March plant count of around 260 plants to sustain a 10 ton crop. Therefore, we need to make sure that the number we set the minimum at has enough buffer built in to obtain that 260 plants. It is very easy to manage a crop with too high a seed plant count in the spring than it is to try and drag a lower plant count crop up to where you want it to be. Another thing to take into consideration when setting your maximum and minimum rates is the percentage change you're achieving. Traditionally, people have been very conservative with these rate changes, but again, trials have shown that anything up to and below 10% variation either way does not make any difference to establishment percentage. Therefore, we would advise a minimum percentage change of 50% between minimum and maximum for a variable seed rate plan. Typically, people go for around about 30% up and 20% down. You will find that your growers will be very reluctant to reduce seed rates, but will be very keen to increase them. Therefore, your target rate will move upwards. Lastly, we should talk about thousand grain weights. Thousand grain weights can differ throughout different seed batches and a farmer could end up with the same variety with uh, several different thousand grain weights. If this is the case, is it is advisable to go back into the plan and adjust the thousand grain weight and recalculate as required. You may be in a position where you're planning for a crop before you know what the seed thousand grain weight is and have set a default thousand grain weight just to create the plan. Once you know what that, that true thousand grain weight is, it's just a case of coming into the plan, setting it and updating the plan. Once you've done this, the plan will be updated to show the new requirements of tonnage and kilos per hectare, average kilos across the field. Getting this right is critical as in this example, if we go from a 46, which is showing 7.2 tons to a 52, total tonnage required is quite different, nearly a whole ton over 40 hectares. Thank you for watching this tutorial. And if you have any queries about the top tips in this recording, please contact your CIS person.